Charcoal puts off a bunch of bad white smoke when you first light it, and you have to wait a while to put your food on. But what about methods that are constantly lighting charcoal, like the snake or minion methods? Do they put off a bunch of bad smoke? Let's find out. To test that, I set up the kettle with the snake method and lined up some charcoal all the way around the edge with a couple of chunks of wood for a little bit of flavor. I lit the end of the snake with an electric torch, but you could also light about a dozen briquettes in a chimney and dump them on. The idea of the snake method is that it burns from one end to the other just like a fuse. So you have the lit charcoal and that lights the charcoal next to it, which lights the charcoal next to that, and so on and so on until the whole thing burns through. And that gives you a pretty consistent amount of heat throughout the cook over a long period of time without having to fuss with your vents. And as you can see, the kettle is putting off a fair amount of white smoke right after lighting it. And if I were to go and put the meat on the kettle right now, you definitely taste it and it wouldn't come off good. So it's better to let it wait until the smoke clears up. So it's been about 20 minutes or so, and if you take a look at the kettle, it's starting to put off some really good smoke. It's gone from white to more of a gray, and now it's blue, which means I can totally put the food on there now that it's ready. But I'm gonna let it go for a couple of hours. I'm gonna put the time lapse on, so that way we can watch and see if we get any big puffs of smoke. So it's really only been about an hour and a half. I'm about to lose my light, and I wanna finish this experiment while you can still see it. And throughout the entire time, the smoke came out nice and clear from the beginning until now when I opened up the lid, let a bunch of oxygen in there, and then cut it off by putting the lid back on. It's yet another reason why if you're looking, you're not cooking. Some of the science behind this is if you wanna have a good clean burning fire, it has to burn really, really hot. But if it burns hot, you can't have a big fire, otherwise you're not gonna be cooking low and slow. You're gonna be searing things like steaks. Conversely, if you were to have a slower, lower temperature smoldering fire, you're gonna put off a bunch of nasty byproducts, even though you're cooking at the same temperature as you would with a small hot fire. So let's look into why the snake method works well for this kind of cook. And the main reason is that the snake method keeps the fire small as it's burning a little bit throughout the entire time, rather than a whole bunch of charcoal that just kind of smolders. Not only that, but the charcoal as it burns is gonna do two things. And the first one is it's gonna dry out the charcoal that's coming up next to it, and it preheats it. It gets it warm so that way when the fire finally touches it, it lights really, really fast. And because of that, you don't go through all that slow smoldering parts, you go straight to the clean burning smoke, which is exactly what you want when you're doing a long cook. So let's check the temperature of the charcoal inside the kettle. So the charcoal is ranging from about 225 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the temperature inside of the kettle. And as you get closer to the fire, it warms up to three or 400 degrees, which is more than enough for it to dry out and get ready for it to light up. But I can tell you're not convinced yet, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait for this charcoal to burn just a little bit more so we get back to that nice, clear smoke. And then I'm gonna take some charcoal that's been sitting in the bag. It hasn't had the chance to preheat or dry out. I'm gonna put it on the end of the snake. And we'll see what happens. And just like that, we've got Puff the Magic Dragon. After an hour and a half of nice, clean smoke, we've got a bunch of white smoke that's coming out of that kettle, and it's all because of the freshly lit charcoal that we just added. And one mistake that a lot of people will make is they won't add enough charcoal in the beginning, and that means they have to add it mid-cook. And you wanna make sure you have enough to get to the point where you're gonna wrap it so that way that smoke doesn't end up on your food. But this video is just the beginning. If you wanna learn more about the science of getting good smoke on your rubber kettle, check out this video where I do a deep dive.